Good morning, welcome back to Everyday Struggle. I'm the Desker here with DJ Academics, Wayno and Star hey, Gentleman. Uh, good morning, oh, good morning. Hey. That was take two, we're hey, more uh, alive now. Oh, yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> hanging now. You know what I mean, listen, I just went out to LA, so you know I mean, I'm kind of feeling a little Hollywood. You know what I mean? I'm previewing my, I'm previewing my new lifestyle out there. I love LA, man. Did you sign to a label while you're out there? No, nah, but somebody might have signed to me. You're in a 360, you know I mean? aren't you, Ack? All right. I might have signed somebody to a 360. So you're thinking about moving out there? Of course, yeah. of course. I mean, I, like, I feel like it's a, it's more to the environment that I prefer. <laughs> okay? Try, try carefully. <laughs> Everybody who goes try to carefully. L.A. wants to move there, and then after less than a year, you want to come back. Nah, but I'm down with the whole lifestyle. I'm about you, to go you vegan. You think you are, you think you are. I mean, vegan, you know what I mean? Start doing yoga, you know what I mean? Yeah, Drink right. some little green grass or green juice, whatever they call it. Wheat grass. grass. L.A. lifestyle. <laughs> oh, do that here. You know what I mean? Do that here, man. <laughs> do that here? Hell no. In New York City? Yeah, people do that. Weather's too trash here, man. <laughs> Have you been outside? I agree with you on that. <laughs> I agree with you on that. L.A. act. All right, so let's get into some topics. Wait, how was your trip? It was good. I had a nice weekend away. She gonna act like yo, she didn't go to Bermuda. She came in here all glowing. I didn't climb any trees. Act. I made you proud. I kicked it Where'd at the go? resort all weekend, Bermuda. Okay. It was nice. nice. Short yeah. flight. The people there are some of the coolest people ever. Yeah, Everyone yeah. was just so friendly. It was nice to get away from New York and Damn, interact with nice your ass stayed on a resort. <laughs> Usually, you, you go to some third world country to climb a tree. It's crazy. I, I, no, that's I, what I, happens. I called developing nations. Don't say third world country. This brother. Hey, hey, I was born in Jamaica. We call it a third world country still. You know what I mean? We're not with the politically correct stuff. Academics. Um, all right, we're going to start with Jewels today. So he is a wanted man right now after reportedly trying to go through mm. security with a loaded handgun at Newark, Newark Airport on oh, Friday. Jesus. Now, reportedly, he did try to escape and got away in a taxi cab. And a rep close to him is reportedly... <laughs> Discussing with authorities, negotiating his surrender at the moment. There aren't many details on this, but look, this isn't the first time he's been in trouble with the law. In 2011, he was arrested at his recording studio with guns, drugs, ammunition. Yeah. Do you guys think this was a mistake? Did he forget he had this gun? Why would he even try to go through, <laughs> go through security with? I don't Jules, know this... Jules is a vet, I asked. That's why. He's not new in the game. I, I'm going to be sensitive. We, 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 we have uh, friends and family connected. Uh, there's no negotiating with New Jersey police about your your surrender or your arrest. Reportedly. Yeah, he, he's trying to strategically figure out how and when, when he does turn himself in, the reality that there will be no bail. You, you, you don't run mm -hmm. from, from uh, uh, that type of situation and then think you're going to bond out. It's not going to happen. I don't wish jail upon him, but this is some real ho-ass sucker shit. And I have to say, you know, real niggas don't want to go to jail, but they ain't scared to go to jail. Uh, well, listen, I have to say that. I, I'm waiting for TMZ to put out this footage because this shit got to be more hilarious than when yeah. Too Short ran from the cops. There has to be footage. I think the cops <laughs> probably saw this nigga booking it the other way and be like, let him go. Look at him. He got a bandana <laughs> tilted like perfectly on his head like he's running with fucking <laughs> like size 38 Tim, uh, uh, um, um, true religion jeans. We're going to catch that nigga later. Yeah. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> come on, man. The size. Th come on, dog. Like, oh, we going to do catch that, that nigga going? later. Come on, come on. I mean, with a skull gang chain. Come on, man. We're catching that nigga later, bro. We're catching that nigga later. You feel for him? Yeah, because he's a father of three. You know what I mean? Because he's a father of three, and this is some serious shit. I mean, my opinion might be a little bit biased because I've known Jewels for a long time, and this is not like him. I mean, he had the other, you know, the other case prior, but that was particular. This at the airport, that shit is no joke. I don't think he knew he had it, and that's why he ran. Like, that was a surprise to him. Yeah. Just like it was a surprise to TSA. I think anytime we hear about like a rapper, anybody at all, having like a pistol at the airport, you probably forget it. Like, clearly, like no one's really trying. Like you're not gonna get through, clearly, right? Uh -huh. So I think, I mean, when, when, if we go back to his past, and maybe that's why he ran, right? Um, 2011, to be exact. Yeah, he was convicted of a firearm, and, and uh, it was two charges: uh, possession of a firearm and um, possession. I'm sorry, un unlawful possession of a firearm. Exactly, so he might be on papers where it, this might be be something to really send him, you know what I mean, upstate for some shit. So, so possibly that's why, the running thing just like confuses me. Listen, it's your instinct to run. At you the airport? Listen, you ever committed a crime? You gonna stand there and just, and go? You gonna run, like you're not gonna stand, like he, he didn't have time to think sensible right there. It was instinct, let me get the fuck out of here. I mean, it's not like you can really run, but he just ran, like, I, I don't, he wasn't thinking, overall. Man, have you been, you've been in Newark Airport, man. <laughs> I've been in every airport. I'm wondering who the hell picked him up. 
know. Yeah, it's I know. unfortunate. He, yeah, it's not a lot of details. Reportedly a taxi. But we'll see what happens. It is unfortunate if he was caught off guard. Well, hopefully, hopefully if I can just add this, hopefully he will turn himself in. But I think on a, on a larger scale, uh, you know, New Jersey is not the state to play around. You and I are born in, well, you born in Jamaica, I forget. I was born in Jamaica, but okay. I lived all my life in Jamaica. But the tri-state area in New York is tough. Well, too, Jersey right? in particular, I was born and raised in Jersey, mm -hmm. it's not the state to play around. And a lot of artists and entertainers move from New York to Jersey, I'm sure you can vouch for this, and a lot of them learn the hard way. You can't take the fuckery and the dumb shit from New York out to Jersey. People pay high-ass taxes. The police out there are extra hard on you. They will follow you. They will profile you. They don't give a shit. Yeah. It, it, it's a bad situation. Nobody wishes jail upon him, but the reality is, to, to my understanding, because I do carry a firearm in New Jersey, they just are very, very tough all around. And, um... It looks like he he might be faced with some serious jail time. Again, he he was convicted in 2011 of having a firearm, illegal firearm. They they, they in my opinion, they're going to make an example out of him when in, when they do catch him. Yeah, and again, there's nothing funny about him possibly going to jail. Only the, the story. Well, him running is funny. Yeah, well, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. <laughs> I'm nah, sorry. Think, that shit's think, funny. I think that's the funny part. <laughs> <laughs> again, even though it's instinctual, you could say, man, at the airport, Joel's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so no more details currently, but we'll stay tuned. On a lighter note, uh, Vince Staples with some of the best promo we've seen in a while. So last week he released his promo video for a GoFundMe he's built. Basically, he's tired of everyone critiquing his music, his interviews, all of his opinions. Uh, so here's what he had to say to fans. Com, you could decide to donate to the cause of $2 million, which will allow me to shut the fuck up forever, and you will never hear from me again. No songs, no interviews, no anything. If not, you can choose to let me do what the fuck I want to do when I want to do it. Get off of my dick or fund my lifestyle. The choice is yours. Either way, we appreciate you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Vince Staples, so thank God uh, the GoFundMe is nowhere near $2 million. He's not going anywhere, and he did follow up with a new song. Let's listen to a snippet. No club, show me you can keep your money. It don't do nothing for me. They looking for me, yeah. Use a dummy, yeah. Have somebody find your body parts. Running, running, yeah. They bay bay. Ain't for play. Still the stakes, still the all right, let's start with the GoFundMe. What'd you guys think about this promo? That shit was genius. That shit was amazing, man. I like Vince Staples. It's just crazy how you put everybody in the Cash 22. It's like you damned if you do, damned if you don't, but everybody has to say something about it. You know what I mean? Vince Staples repping LBC. That's lit. That was dope. He's a comedian, man. Yeah, he's crazy. Like, he's going to have a career beyond rap. Definitely. V Vince Staples is like one of the master trolls because sometimes, and I actually. I don't even know if he's trolling most of the time. He's being serious. He just says it in a trolling, comedic way. Mm -hmm. He's super amazing with social media, and I think really that's, like, he doesn't go too hard pro promo and stuff, but, like, stuff like this, which plays directly into the song he dropped, I think is dope. The song itself, I like the song. Right. So, um, I mean, his video kind of felt like how I felt a lot of times. Y'all want me to shut the fuck up, man? It's going to be more than two million. Two million, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I don't know how you living out there in LBC, but I don't know. Two they, million, they I don't might, know they because they might find a way for you. Act. They might they might put that bread up. Twenty million? I yeah. shut the fuck up. They probably they might send it through. You you'd be surprised. Well, twenty million start to go for me, man. Y'all get me straight out of here. <laughs> Zach sent me back to Jamaica. I could be misjudging his music. Um, I've heard nothing to date that has really moved me. I know he's popular, um, but I I like to hear him talk. I like to hear his insight on things. And even though he's a younger guy and he, you know, is still, and I say this respectfully, you know, developing, uh, but I like, I'm, I'm more interested, let me, let me choose my words carefully, more interested in hearing him talk. And I think we, you just said something about uh, what's after or beyond music. Yeah. I think the music is just a vessel for him right now. And um, uh, a, a good friend of mine, Torre, a very good friend of mine, interviewed him. And Torre asked him, could he define his sound? For complex, right? Yeah, and he said, no, he couldn't. So, uh, I don't think I'm too far off the mark with regards to his music. Again, I'm, I'm, nothing has really knocked me out, but, that's, but again, I don't like to use the word trash because people do create and they try to create art. But if I can just say with regards to the GoFundMe page, I like it. I, I think it's um, clever. I think it's clever. I think that... Um, uh, what I like about him, I see in myself. He's ego-driven, he's arrogant, he's uh, somewhat pompous. He says so on his, uh, his Twitter page. What does he say, the coldest nigga? 
around or something to that effect. So, so in this song, he s mentions a couple of things, right? So he calls like the VMAs and the Grammys for snubbing his last project. Right. But he also says that he's tired. He feels like the press is blocking his blessings. Right. So remember a few months ago, he criticized Eminem's Trump freestyle. That's totally his right. Yeah. But he felt like the press and maybe fans went on a rampage. So since then, he's sort of fallen back a little bit. But we right. like Vince to be outspoken. He makes good points. He's hilarious. I think we want to hear what he has to say. Yeah, you got, you got to remember Vince. He comes from somewhat of, a, of an alumni of the Our Future Collective. Mm. You know, first time I heard him was on the Earl uh, mixtape. They always been outspoken, so you're gonna get that from him. And he's been able to rap on uh, Schoolboy Q albums. Like, he could hold his weight with anybody, but like you said, I think it's gonna be something later on. Cause his career has been like, you you don't really get the whole him just doing music thing ever from the, from the start. Like once I heard him talk for, for his first interview, yeah. you seen it was more to him than just music. Yeah. What he what he says he says well, and, yeah. and I'm 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 impressed that he uh, he he wears the um, he wears it on his sleeve about not drinking, drugging, and stuff stuff like like that. You know, so, yeah. so that means that he's um, genuinely creating whatever it is that he creates. And again, I, I'm not gonna discredit his music, but I just I have not heard anything that's made me say yo. I mean, but again, I do like where he's coming from at such a young age. He's like that smart kid, you know, the the, the smart kid in in high school that hangs with everybody, the gangsters, the nerds, that just doesn't give a fuck about how anybody feels. That's what I get from him. Mm. That sounds like Vince in a nutshell. Hilarious. For real. Hilarious, For real. dude. Yeah, he do say, he says smart shit in an ignorant way. Mm-hmm. Just kind of <laughs> in your face, Absolutely. unapologetic, not too polished, but still funny as fuck. Absolutely. So I like I like reading his tweets. Yesterday he was going off, or last night, <clears throat> and I think he even, um, he was going off on music critics about even Yachty shit, and he was like, listen, it's like before, before y'all get at Yachty, uh, we need to see what's going on with we you guys. We got to see how you're consuming music <laughs> right. before we could listen to your opinion on how Yachty's album sound or whoever else in the yeah, culture. He said, see. how y'all living? Like, he said, I need to see the inside of your crib. He said, because Yachty ain't got no Ikea shit in his crib. Like, he just got a funny way of saying everything. I'm man. surprised he doesn't you know? have a TV show yet. That's a crazy thing. How is no one? I think it's because he wants to focus on music, obviously, but a show has to come out of this. You know what, it's though? I, I think his personality is from him kind of being nonchalant. I don't know if he, he's on some, like, hey, l let me do this every day or mm -hmm. let me be that extra focused. Like, for example, that it might be needed for a TV show or whatever. Like. Yeah. Because a lot of people say you should do a podcast, and he don't really have a than a Or he should be going Bill Maher or something. Yeah, that'd be, be the next Chappelle <laughs> show. Like I feel like he has the perfect dry humor for that. Right. But again, it's a timing thing. If he wants to focus on music now, maybe that comes later down right, the line. Right, right, right. We'll see. I, I do want to add something though. Um, he it appears that within these lyrics, that he's taken a few shots. Mm -hmm. It appears. Now he also denounced in that that uh, complex interview with my friend Torre that he thought uh, beefing was corny. Mm -hmm. You know, going at each other. So I'm curious to know if, if he now is in somewhat sort of in support of beefing in a sense because he's taken some shots in this, this new track. You mean personal shots or like at the entities? Well, entertaining the, the jousting back and forth. I mean, if, if one of these, you know, um, um, digital vehicles were to respond to him, how would he then take that? Mm -hmm. Again, I like how he's saying certain things, but but you know at the same time I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm cautious. He he's a talker. Just because someone does a lot of talking doesn't necessarily mean that they have something uh, poignant to say. But um, I am interested. Yeah, I think when he when he mentioned beefing though, like at least in that interview, he means more like you have a problem. Individual. With me? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Um, but yeah, he's clearly calling out a couple outlets. I mean. We know these outlets are faceless. They're not going to respond. But he all they're going to do is just give a negative press. <laughs> he calls out people, too. Like you, We've seen his back and forth on Twitter with Nori and other people. Like He's not afraid to say your name if he has to. But then he's always good at resolving, right? Because him and Absolutely. Nori had a conversation, and Nori trying to figure out how to use Twitter was also... I think he's the perfect example of how generations, well, how to, like, you have the elders and you have the young guys, how we have to talk with and not act. Right. Like he's a like a diplomat in that sense. Like he knows how to get his point across without being disrespectful. But he can be disrespectful and be like, yeah, but that's because an action causes a reaction. Yeah. yeah. Then have the conversation and sort it out. Right. Vince Staples. All right. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Chief Keef started a very interesting debate on Twitter this weekend when he tweeted out his rap Mount Rushmore featuring, of course, himself, Kanye, Lil Wayne, Drake. Of course, people went crazy oh, baby. <laughs> about this. But uh, oh, baby. 
How outlandish is this, or is it even outlandish? You Wait, want this one first? You know that Wait, we think that... Wh- which idiots were actually like debating this shit? <laughs> because <laughs> this is what I expected I, I just from didn't, No, no, it was funny. It was funny, but I mean, from Chief Keith's perspective, this made a lot of sense. Mm. But I don't know who the hell would be debating that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, it, what, what is it? Wayne, Kanye... Drake. Drake, Drake and himself? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what the fuck? Of course. Nothing to debate. <laughs> again, post... You see, again, I keep saying, and I think even when we were talking about Lil Xan and... Yeah, we know Lil Xan is 21, not like 18. But for the younger kids, like most of their like music, like Wayne is like such like an old rapper at this point. They only know from Wayne on up. You know what I mean? So like shit, I could see someone who's younger than Chief Keith throwing Young Thug on that shit. I could see someone who is 16 right now throwing Uzi on it. But you're 26, yes? Yeah. Would you find Chief Keith's... Um, would you find him to be accurate with how he, um, you know... Put himself on that on that uh, on that face with well, the others. Well, first of all, my my Mount Rushmore. I don't think it could it would have anyone but maybe Wayne on there okay. um, from that list. And by the way, Kai is, is good too. But what about Chief Keef specifically? Chief Keef again, does he belong on that Mount Rushmore? No, because again, I'm looking from mm. I'm looking from the '90s. But if, if I'm talking about impact since say 2006, that's what I'm saying. We got we got a time market. If you look from Impact since 2006, absolutely I'm putting Chief Keef on there. Okay. Because okay. He, he changed music and changes. He got a bunch of sons running out here. Sons, grandsons, exactly. nephews, it, nieces. It, it, exactly. And then, of course, beyond him, Wayne got a bunch of sons. Yeah. You get me? And then Kanye changed music. So all those people changed music. Yeah. So I would agree with that list if we're looking from 06 on. But if we're looking in the totality of, of rap. No, I'm, I'm just talking about him putting his face on it because he put his face on it. I feel like you always have to put he your should. face, right? Yeah, if yeah. you're a rapper, like if, if it wasn't choice. him, I wouldn't be mad at Gucci being there in, instead of him because I think that's kind of still the same tree. Mm-hmm. Gucci, um, I'm not going to just throw big stuff. But, but you're saying from 2006 yeah. on? 2006 on. Okay. okay. Um, but that's not a bad list, only in terms of impact. Okay, right, right, right. I, I think the, the biggest thing about it is people are taking it as like when everybody looks at a list, they look at it as, oh, who's the best rapper? I looked at it like when I first saw it, I thought it was funny, but I thought about influence. Mm-hmm. If you're talking about pure influence, Kanye has influenced a whole generation of people. So has Drake. So has Chief Keef. It's like Chief Keef has been in the game officially for like five years now. So a kid that was 20, 20 is 15, mm-hmm. listening to him, they was he was there everything. Right. So... I mean, I don't take it like this is his list. Like, it's not for us to say, oh, he's wrong. It's his shit. And it's like, I don't think he takes it that serious either. Like, it's Chief Keefe we're talking about. I think he takes it very serious. Um, and, and, and you have to put your foot down with regards to your, your, your legacy that you hope to be. I'll even say that 10 years from now, Chief Keefe belongs on that Mount Rushmore. Um, <clears throat> I counted him out years ago. I was sitting on my homie Vlad's couch, Vlad TV, and I was, I was a little saucy, and I said, ah, he won't be around. Uh, and I don't usually do that with regards to the younger artists. Um, and I was off, and I, and I man up to admit that I was off, be, because what has happened since then, and I've always said the greatest power is influence, good or bad. And as you just said, th- these are his sons out here, Chief Keith. You just had a bunch of guys standing in a room with no shirts, just, just vibing, and, 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 and you know, yes, drill music has, has somewhat faded out, but uh, his influence has been crazy. It's still lingering on. I mean, uh, you know, one of my favorite songs, uh, Sosa. You know, um, there was a white girl strumming an acoustic guitar doing an acoustic version of Sosa. You saw that? Yeah. Uh, y- years ago. And I said, shit. I mean, so I, I had to fall back and say, wow, he's really, really influencing generations to come. So yes, he, he belongs in that Mount Rushmore. I, I would call him one of Wayne's sons as well. I would call him one of Wayne's sons. Dreads, you know what I mean? Like, that's one of the main things. Like, when you look at Wayne, a lot of these dudes look exactly like Wayne. You know, and, and Wayne, he's, he's held it together for a long time. It's curious to, I'm curious to see what he's gonna do going forward, but, you know, everybody that's on that list has been a very impactful, influential person. Like, Drake, it, it, you could go back and keep making Mount, Mount Rushmore. There's only four people that could go in it, right? But if we talk in terms of influence, like Drake was influenced by a lot of people before him. People, I seen somebody call Drake uh, Ja Rule. <laughs> like, but I mean, as far as like melody and singing, okay. like now, once Drake took the rapping and singing shit dead serious, now every artist raps and sings. So it's like, 
he might be one of the most influential people. And then it's going to be somebody after them. Like you said, Thug. Like, it's going to be kids that Thug means more to a lot of kids than <clears throat> Wayne or any of them or Chief Keef, you know? Yeah, again, if, if we're going with influence, which that's what I think yeah, we all agree right. that was that list was compiled of, right? Mm -hmm. Or that's why those artists were there. Because if it was just commercial success, that might it might look yeah, like right, right, right. influence. Shit, we could throw Kid Cudi on one of those spots, right? right. right. There's multiple people you could kind of like pick and like replace one another with. Oh, yeah. So I'm not mad at it, and that's why I don't think there's no debate. Like yeah, when, when like, an artist right. is given his perspective, you gotta look at their age. Look at the music they're making. And you got to look at the point of view they're looking from, right? right? And and another thing too is like everything doesn't everything is not always focused and centered on the best cuz people was like, "Oh, where's Kendrick Lamar?" or where like people always try to, oh, "Where's J. Cole?" People always try to throw that in, in there. It's like world, he don't it, exist. It, 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 Kendrick Lamar does not even exactly. like Yeah, you get me? And the thing is is that I like the fact that both of them can coexist. Like I can like J. Cole just as much. I listen to Chief Keith's music. Like, I, I can like both of them the same, you know? And they don't have to get in each other's way. That's that's what I like about the balance of today sometimes. Yeah. I do believe that we should do like a generational, like um, a Mount Rushmore. Because it's, it's hard it's, though, because it's only four spots. Mm -hmm. well, well, if we think about it for a generation, like, I mean, shit, you know how we already say, yo, who ran what year to what year, whatever. Yeah. We like, should do five year, five year. Yeah, yeah like, five, five, year, like five, year, five year increments or decade, you know what I mean? Okay. Kanye still, it's like Kanye still a top, like, no matter what, he's still a top guy. Like, his first album mm -hmm. dropped in 04, and he was doing beats on Foxy album in like 99, 2000. So it's like, that just goes to show you how enough. he supersedes it all sometimes. Yeah, because he might be on a bunch of Mount Rushmore's. Yeah, he, I mean, he's what, probably one of the most influential artists ever. Period, yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. All right, it's just fun, nothing to get angry about. Like you guys said, it's always right. going to change depending on the artist's perspective. All right, so a little bit more fun. Uh, March Madness is in full swing. So one Twitter user, Carrington Harris, made a really dope 64-song bracket um, based on Kanye's songs. So he divided up into four categories, Chicago, Saint, Northwest, and Donda. This is super dope. What'd you guys think about the bracket? This went viral really quickly, of course. That's a fan. <laughs> That's a fan. Most people today are just trolls, haters. Um, that, that's a fan. To put that type of work into that, I mean, you, you have to respect it. I mean, I'm speaking of influence, right? He, he pulled 64 yeah. amazing songs. There's yeah. not many artists that you could pull such incredible tracks from their catalog. And I think he said he spent all day working on this. I mean, I, I was looking at the other, uh, the other, the original version with where he was doing stuff by hand, you know, writing. I mean, that that's someone who clearly respects Kanye West's, uh, you know, come up, his origins, his, and his current impact. And that's a that's a hard list to compile because it's still more so many more songs. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. And for me, All Falls Down is my favorite Kanye song ever. I I pick All Falls really? Down. Really? Everything. Yes. That's mine. Yes. All yeah. Falls Down. The <laughs> best. This is. I mean, just even this is the first time I, I, I actually saw this to be honest. But um. Just going through the brackets, like the Northwest bracket, I see like three songs I could probably make it out of that. Uh, through the Wire, uh, the Hey Mama. Good. I love Hey Mama. Hey Mama was And good. of course, Can't Tell Me and Nothing. So Devlin any of those and three. Dress, yeah, there's, yeah. this would be so hard to pick. And, and that's the thing, like you gotta like bypass certain songs just because Kanye got so many great fucking songs. Is New Slaves on here? That's another one of my favorites. You like New Slaves? I love New Slaves. What's that on Yeezus? Yeah. yeah. That was the only that's the only thing I actually liked about Yeezus. The so only track fresh. you liked on it? Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of Yeezus, but New Slave because you know what it was? It was like for so long we hadn't got that nerve from Kanye about uh politics or you know what I mean about This is one with I'm, his greatest verse of all time? With New Slaves? Yeah. It, did he say that about one of them? That it was his greatest verse of all time? Wait, was wait, it New okay. Slaves? I, I like where you're going with that. But but did you like New Slaves because it was dope? Content wise, or that it sounded good. I like the way it's just sound like no, no, I know. Somebody listen, remember before, we, before we got new slaves, we kept getting those pop ups on YouTube everywhere, the projections on the walls uh -huh. with new slaves. So, prior to new, the new slaves, did the video even? I can't remember if the video dropped or not, but I remember going on YouTube continuously to keep hearing it, hearing it over. I remember me and Royce the Five Nine was like, oh, he about to come with some shit. And then when Yeezus came out, I wasn't the biggest fan of Yeezus, like you know, but new slaves was that shit. Did Kanye and, respond to this? 
No. He's he not on. Yes, He's he did with, with, with a pink with a pink Caesar. He got a pink Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> he responded with a pink Caesar. Yeah, you have to respond to something like that. <laughs> as you know, as just someone, retweet it, right? Yeah, yeah, you have to. That, do you guys think there are a lot of other artists that you could do a bracket like this with? Yeah, and you know, sure so you can. Drake. I started a um, Drake and Jay Z would be dope. Drake. You said who? Jay Z, yeah. Jay Z or Drake? Why don't you do a Drake bracket? Man, I ain't got that much time, bro. <laughs> I started a conversation on Twitter about could, could you? Uh, about Kendrick's <laughs> album. Yeah, I'll, I'll put in Kendrick's. We could album probably do a 128 yeah. for Drake. We could do 128 for Kanye too. You know what I mean? Like some of these artists, like they've really that that's actually a testament to how long they've been in the game and how many dope songs. Absolutely. Like shit, if you go to a, a, um, a Kanye show or. Yo, the, a or a Drake, Drake show, show yo. you get the same. I remember going to a Drake show. I'm like, damn, I forgot that this thing had this many hits. Yo, hits. I went to the Summer 16 tour. He was throwing on shit for 10 seconds and cutting it off. I was like, damn, it had the whole shit rocking. He like, performed 30 songs for 10 seconds. Yeah, and, and it kept was crazy. It was crazy. So uh, you could definitely do this for a lot of people. So, so uh, big salute to the person who did this. Definitely takes a lot of time and dedication. I ain't got that much time. Absolutely. You guys already picked your windows, though. That's pretty yeah, impressive. I'm going to have to like, sit down and actually really do this. I'm going like, to go over it again, though. <laughs> wait, wait. Who, who, so what's your favorite Kanye West song? Mine's All Falls Down. All Falls Down. Uh, That's with Selena favorite. Johnson. Yeah. Mm. Damn, how is it so easy for you guys to pick one favorite Kanye? In spite of the fact Damn, that uh, the video is um, Stacey Dash. Yeah. And I mean, he I sampled. I would think he would like Stacey Dash Remember, fan. On, what's on, that? Um, I would think you would like her. And not her politics. Really? Uh, no. I thought, okay. um, and then, you know, All, all Falls Down, because the original version, I was working at Rockefeller at the time, the original version, he sampled Lauryn Hill on it. Mm. That's why I oh, love yeah. that song so much, but I like the version with Selena Johnson, but th what he says in that song just speaks to me. It speaks forever. That, sure. like, Timeless record. You could record. put that out right now, that type of content, and it, it would go. Timeless record. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to do this later. In the meantime, academics, you want to take us through some numbers for Lil Yachty and Logic? Uh-oh. Yes, Lil Yachty. Right? We actually, we, we did an over on there, Yachty. Yes. And I believe was we were right. The only we were right. Yeah, I, we were right. I didn't say 70. I said. Hang on. I'm sorry. Right, say that again. Did Star, Star, I feel like Star got the closest. Did he? Did oh, I? Wait, didn't? I, I thought it was Star went under. I thought he went I thought over. Went, I, I forget. All right, I'm going to rewatch okay. the episode. I, I forget. But I, I think you need to apologize first because last week you were way off the mark with that Nikki stuff. I saw you on Twitter apologizing before you do this oh, week. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but in terms of Yachty, I believe either we're all I'm over. Brushing past the Nikki. No, no, I'm going to get back to the Nikki. <laughs> okay, let me please do. First. Please do. <laughs> got me looking crazy out here. Go ahead. With, with Yachty, uh, Yachty, he's projected to sell 70000 which is so great for him because he sold 44 last time. Yeah. He was, like, publicly distraught about it because he felt like he had peekaboo and he was, yeah. he was like, he couldn't believe it happened. But um, without no single, he's about to push 70 k And maybe it's just, like, fans just being dedicated and loyal or perhaps not putting out a single actually helps because people just stream the whole project, not the one single right. you give them. Regardless, um, that's a good number for him. Also, Logic with the mixtape. I don't know how Logic. Bobby Logic Tarantino might really be white. Too. I don't know how he's selling. <laughs> he's selling 120,000 with a mixtape. That's what he's projected to do. That's yeah. not normal numbers for no. That's why he's comparing himself to pop stars, right? Yeah, he's out of here. I get that. Now back to the over or under. <laughs> Crazy off when I was talking about Nikki. Nikki stands like they were getting at me. <laughs> did the bar bar Wait, did the bar the barbs was on me crazy like, and I said that she would do two hundred. They okay. was like, yo, what? You you don't support Nikki going crazy? At Rightfully me. so. They were on me because when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Right. Wrong, right. right? And Nikki sold actually two forty four right. uh, last time around. So if I was to adjust what I said then, she definitely sold over two hundred, but she ain't selling over three hundred. <laughs> like you got it. I gotta throw that in there, right? I gotta cap it up. Sucking shit. Sucking shit. All right, well, why, why, why should you do like 350? <laughs> they come for you again? Oh, yeah, they're going to All right, so with Logic putting up these big numbers, he also spoke to Zane Lowe and told him that he signed a $30 million deal with Jeff, Def Jam. He said when he floated that, he didn't even think that they would bite, but they did. Um, you've worked with Def Jam. That's yes. a pretty big deal. I need to do some more work with Def Jam. <laughs> 30, 30 M's, like, I mean, but you know what? If he signed, to, that means dedication. That means that they're, they're on for his career. Mm -hmm. Like, they want to be fully involved. Like, nothing, when people... Wait, was that a 360? I don't know if it's a 360 because the make, type of numbers that he's putting up. It's deeper than a 360, but go ahead and finish. Yeah, I, because of the type of numbers that he's putting mm -hmm. up, he could legitimize, and he could ask for a lot of different shit. But when somebody puts something in black and white like that, they're showing that, yo, I'm fucking with you. Let's do this as long as we can. So salute the logic for that 30 M's, man. I need to join the team or something. Like, what's <laughs> if good? I can jump in here. Go ahead, brother. Finish. Um, this is why I said that a $10 million 
deal for a little pump is not far-fetched. When you got Logic out here bringing down a $30 million deal, and the type of deal that it is, so let, let's be clear, if, if you understand um, um, legal language, it's a binding contract. A binding contract means, yes, the money's there. It's right fucking there. But if you don't give us what we want, at a certain point in time, the judge will enforce penalties. That's the difference between a binding contract and other types of primary contracts. It's binding. So he's now officially a corporate whore. He's got to give Def Jam what they want when they want it. He's got to have it in the can, cocked and ready in the barrel to go, or else they can, they can penalize him and they can put other money aside and it'll, it'll be tough for him to get it. He will have to get um, uh, uh, lawyers to go in and to try and fight for the money that is there. They, they have guaranteed the money, but it's a binding contract. I feel you, but I think we're looking at the, the dark side of it yeah. more than the light. Clearly, clearly. Um, but, but, but that's the term. It, it's a binding contract. I'm just... I mean, like, I don't think he's... He doesn't have a problem with putting out music. I mean, if you look... When did he drop? He dropped his first album, like, 2012, right? Consistently, he's put shit out. Boom, 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 and it's hit every mark, so... I get what you're saying, but I think that a lot of it is going to be within his terms because the deal is never about the money. It's always about the terms. It's always about what you want versus what I'm going to give. And the way his career is going, the way his, his diligence to put music out, the way his discipline is, he's going to be good. I don't see nothing wrong coming in his future. Yeah, of course. I, I can, again, the number to me is the most ast astonishing point. I don't know the No pocket watcher. No, 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 no. no. I, I mean, that's just what it is. Like, I, I, I can't, I can't try to speculate like what that deal. I'm thinking 30 million. That's a 360. But it might not be. It might be be structured in a certain type of way, yeah. as you said, where he has to deliver right. when they need it. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's soup. I think it's big that he felt confident enough to speak on it. Usually, we we hear the reports of the number from like a billboard, like sources told yeah. us, blah blah blah. But clearly, you could tell like he's very happy where he's at. And that's a deal that he's proud of it. And shit, I haven't heard nobody else. I mean, why not? You know, Logic ain't pulling up the lust or none of that. He ain't got to worry about nobody trailing his cars and none of that. So he's going to speak on that number. But again, for you young kids out here who don't know nothing about contracts and you hear 30 million, that does not mean he got $30 million in his pocket. Please don't get it twisted. And I will say, as Star was comparing him to Lil Pump, again, of course, there is some type of feasible way to, to say, yo, Pump could get $10 million. Yeah. But if we look at Logic versus Pump, I think longevity is like a big, uh, a big difference right there. Like, if, if I'm a label, I'm probably saying, yo, I'm going to have Logic around for the next five, maybe ten. Do you think that Lil Pump can now get $20 million based upon what Logic has just done? Well, he, you, you as a fan, Lil Pump fan. Uh, no, not no. No? But we know that Logic has a dedicated fan base that actually right. buys records. Logic is selling, Does Logic Pump sold 250 first week. Yeah. Pump sold 44. Logic has songs charted in the top three, multiple songs. He's about to have like 10 songs on the Billboard charts. I mean, Pump has had one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Gucci Gang. So I'm, I'm just putting stuff <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, like yeah. if we check the stats, which you know the labels are running right. the stats, right. when they give out a $30 million check, Pump could get, he could get over five. If, if he gets 10, Kudos, but at thirty million, <laughs> you got to put up those heavyweight numbers, and Logic is doing it. Yeah, and I, I want to go on record, probably, and say that based upon what Logic has just done, Lil Pump can get twenty million, a twenty million dollar deal structured. Again, the, ter the, the 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 term is binding contract. That goes beyond a three sixty deal. It's it's it's, it's very intense. I've, I've dealt with the legal uh, language, you know, for a lot of years, and do, the money's there. Do, do you want to know? And again, because you like. Sometimes you, you like asking for proof for some shit that's some industry, like shit that I know from like sources. Lil Pump recently tried to sign, but Warner blocked that shit. <laughs> I mean, they, they ain't caught like a motherfucker. Com comparing Logic and comparing Lil Pump is like apples and oranges. Like they not even in the same league. I mean, they play the same game, but they not in the same league. Like I think Logic is in a, in, in a space way ahead of Pump. Pump can have a good career. I mean, he hasn't even put out, has he put out? You did say he put out a project, right? He sold 44. Yeah. But I mean, like you said, like with Logic, he has a loyal fan base. The kids that's listening in the Pump, I don't know if they gonna ride with him, you know? Do, do you, I'm sorry, do you think that Logic's fan base will now see him as a corporate whore? No. And, 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 and back off of him slightly? Absolutely he, He's not. now part of the machine. I mean, everybody's- 30 million, a, he's a, he's, he's, 
a different type of person. But I we also talk about him not getting, uh, shall we say, hip hop mainstream acceptance, like the Migos audiences and maybe Love Logic. So I don't know if they look at him like a corporate whore, right? He's really carved his own lane. Yeah, I wouldn't call him that. a corporate whore because you got to remember too, it's like. I think it depends on it, the music you make too. But also, in order to be in the game, like to be a professional, you got to be in the game. And everybody takes a deal, whether it's what Chance the Rapper did with Apple, he just didn't take money from a label. Everybody takes some sort of financial backing, and this type of financial backing makes him look more of a boss than a corporate whore. I mean, yeah. think about this. He, this kid has um, been putting out music officially for only five years now, six years. And this is, and what is, how old is he? He's like 24, like how old is he? I don't even know how old he is. I know he's in his 20s. I don't know. But this makes him look like he bossed up, seriously. I don't think he's a corporate whore at all. I think he's a businessman. I think this strategically puts his team and his family in a good run for years to come. He's going to be killing it. Yeah, he's yeah. not going nowhere no time soon. And I think uh, Logic's fan base, too, I don't think they necessarily care about that, especially when, when he's not, uh, unless his music gets compromised. If, if his music goes a different route because of that, or now the label says, all right, cool, but we need more songs like this. We need you to make this song yeah, he's, for us to recoup. I, I, I don't know his, I'm sorry to cut mm -hmm. I don't know his fan base, but I do know that traditionally history has shown once you become of, of the popular, of, of, of the popular, I'll, I'll just say wave, just, just to bring it up, up to date, uh, that, that, that there is a percentage of the audience that pulls back because they want you to be unique. They don't want you to just be someone who's always there. You're, you're always in a fucking uh, a Sprite commercial. You're always someplace because Def Jam is gonna pimp him out. For 30 million, he's gonna be every fucking where. He'll be at every award show. And there's, there's a certain amount of that audience that is gonna say, eh, he, he's not cool anymore. You don't he, think any of it comes, comes with freedom? I guess when you've earned your stripes and they're willing to put up, you don't think they give you some freedom in the way you move at this point? Well, again, I don't know the ins and the outs, but I, I'm very familiar with binding contracts, and it is based upon certain things uh, delivering the, 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 the product, and there, there can be severe penalties. The penalties is what make that contract different from everything else. But look, he's a professional. He's going to be at every award show. Everybody who is a professional that's in the game is at every award show. For Logic, look at the project he just put out. He, Def Jam does not, I've done business with Def Jam. They're not dictating what type of songs he's making. He makes the type of music he wants to make. His, from every album you, we've ever heard from him, it's him. He just put out something that sounds like he just threw it together. Like he's just really rapping over everything he did 120. He can do what the fuck he want. He doesn't have to say, oh, I got to make this type of record. And they're not going to tell him to make this type of record. They're going to say, keep doing what you're doing. Because him doing what he, do, what he was doing got him nominated for a Grammy. You know, him doing what he's doing got him this type of fan base that he has. So they're not gonna, I don't see them pimping him out. Like, I, I think that they're just gonna let him get in the driver's seat and they're just gonna pour fuel on his fire. Not to go against your um, uh, opinion, but I was signed to Def Jam as an, as an artist, um, starring Buck Wild, some type of comedy CD. Leo Cohen cut the check. I turned in the product and they said, eh, we, might, we may or may not put this out. Um, so I've done business uh, with them as well, but that was an older regime. Yeah. But um, in terms of, you know, where he's at, it's just my opinion that he's going to lose a lot of his luster. He, he's paid in full now, and, and that's a beautiful thing. I support capitalism wholeheartedly, but I think that he's going he's gonna to slightly, uh, his appeal will diminish, that's all. All right, we'll keep an eye. Logic's going to be around for a minute, so we'll see what he does. It'll all be right. interesting. Uh, let's get into grade the bar. So we said Lil Boat 2 is out. It's doing well. It's good for Yachty. He stopped by Funk Flex. Let's take a look. Got more money than a little casino. Got caught fucking on a bitch and a boyfriend walked and wearing four chinos. Hopped out the back door, ran a four flat. That was like way back. Nowadays, I just sit and laugh. Chop stick, long as one giraffe. When I'm coming through, clear the whole path. Walked in the damn spot, it was all females. Nigga, fuck the whole staff. Goddamn nigga, two player. Why you hate? Cause I'm too rare. Young nigga, I'm a fresh prince. Could have bought a crib out in Bel Air. All right, what'd you guys think? I don't think anyone's expecting Yachty to necessarily be a great freestyle artist, but I want to jump in here effort. first. Can I? A for effort. A, not A plus, but A for effort. Everybody's coming at his neck. Ah, oh, he can't freestyle rhymes. Yada yada. I listened to a uh, little boat too. I found three tracks on there to be bangers. Uh, number five is called "She Ready." I think that that has that fun feel that I spoke about weeks ago in terms of what he was able to do with his first project. Uh, number eight is called Love Me Forever. I think the females will love that. 
and he's got a track, uh, what's well, called 66. That was the one that I asked you, what, was that on Little Boat 2? Um, that one with Trippy. With Trippy Red, yeah. I, but I, it's titled different now, but that's the one that I like as well. So A for effort. Um, it, it, no, he's not a freestyler, but, but just for the effort alone, I give him a fucking A. I'm giving him an A too, but just off. Oh of shit! No, what? I'm giving him an A for improvement because uh, he got a lot of criticism. First of all, I'm the person who's telling the new artists now just to not freestyle. Don't okay. do it, right? Okay. Because you're only setting yourself up, and you're gonna be in the conversation with people who that's all they do. Right, right. You guys usually just make music. Yeah. When he first went on Flex, and I give him, I, I also give him an A for for having that bravery to go back yeah. up and yeah. face the fire. He went on, on Flex and some people were like, uh, I, he freestyled on a couple of programs and people were like, we don't know about that. Yeah. And he could have just said, you know what, fuck it, I'm not gonna do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Instead he said, nah, I'm gonna go back up. and I'm Facing gonna, the fire, as you just said, gotta respect it. And he did put up a, a caption on Instagram today, kind of explained that process and said, listen, when I first went up here, I was I had some jitters, whatever, right. but of course I'm back because I'm, I'm right. always gonna stand right. and, and actually face the fire. So yeah. I like it. I like it. Um, I like the fact that he picked the right beat, tipping on four fours. Like that's something that he probably could have. He would have done a freestyle too anyway to just throw out. Mm. Um, I don't care to hear Yachty freestyle. I mean, that's not what I look for from him. T talking about Little Boat too. I like to drink with him and T Grizzly. Like I just want to focus on. Like, I, this is the first time I've listened to the Yachty's music this past weekend. It wasn't bad. I thought it was good for what he does, but. He doesn't even have to do shit like that. And my thing is, this is his second time going on Flex, right? Yeah. yeah. I just hope that in the future, Flex don't come at him again. <laughs> you know, because it's like, he keep he went up there before and he still got added as being a trash rapper. You know, I think he just needs to, I wouldn't say needs to, I think that he should focus on what he does best, which is putting out the type of music he does for his fan base and performing, you know, but. I, I didn't care too much for it, but I'm happy they didn't give him a primo beat. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, Clearly he cares about um, people considering him a trash rapper. Absolutely. Right because all of, you think Little Pump is running to flex is to say, let, yo, put fuck on no. a beat, let fuck me Fuck no. Fuck, fuck no. The fuck, he's gonna flex on Instagram and keep it moving. <laughs> so Yachty, Yachty's one of the last of all these new rappers who really care about even trying to rap, Yeah. right? <laughs> so that's why I ran with an A for effort. I mean, yeah, I think, you know, it's dope that he wants to still put himself in a conversation regardless because he, he said it before. He's like, yo, that's not what I do. Like, he said that before. I think it's, it's dope that he even went up there to do it. Yeah. You know, but, Dave. yeah, I don't know. Don't give him a B plus, man. Come on, stop that bullshit. I give him a B plus? Yeah. I definitely give him a B plus. Ahead, I definitely man. give him a B plus. Yeah, Yachty, I believe, I think he's 21 now or 22. Yachty, he admitted when he came out a couple years ago, he's like, yo, I'm getting better at rapping. Yeah. And, and again, yeah. I think people looking at Nas and be like, yo, we want the final fucking product. We don't want to work in progress. <laughs> right. And he's like, yo, I'm working on it. And he dropped he dropped um, the Summer Song 1 and 2, where like he was showing hints of, yo, I could I could try to get in there. And some people were like, yeah. yo, you're off beat. And he's like, yo, I'm working on the flow. I remember having a conversation with him before he went up to Hot 97, and, and it was a big deal for him. Right. And, and he was like, yo, listen, I've been really working on my flow. And, and I was like, why do you need to prove people wrong like right. that? But he was like... Growing up in hip hop, he says, I feel like I have to. I can't just be like, okay, I'm you making just got money. So Star, let's give Funk Master Flex an A plus for not giving this nigga Welcome to New York City by Jay Z and Cameron beat. Because you know how they try to trip people up in the moments, like, all right, you gonna come up here and rap? Rap on this. Nah, Flex can't, Flex can't <laughs> set a nigga up, especially after he had Aubrey rapping about doing As uh, donuts and Aston Martin, man. Like, I heard they taped that shit like three times. Flex even said it. He said, yo, nigga, we taped that shit three times. You kept forgetting your rhymes, you had to pull a Blackberry out. <clears throat> Don't set Yachty up after you did that with Drake. Now I just mean like, you know, just not giving him the wrong beat. Cause if they would have gave him one of them beats, man, they'd have gave him Beanie Seagulls the truth or something. You'd have been like, oh man. I, like, I can't give Flex uh, a, a, a grade for doing what it is that he should be doing. Yeah, but I, I mean, you know, some, t some people try to trip people up. Like the same way we had the conversation yeah. about Uzi when they threw the Primo beat on. But, but I, just cause he probably respected Yachty for coming back for right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah and if you look at Flex's face, he's looking, he's, you know, but at the same time, he's respecting a younger person who came back to face the fire. And again, yeah. that, that's, that's big points. And by the way, about Flex, that whole thing that Flex did worked. That's what it, that's yeah. why it was, we said it, we said it here too, I, right? I said it. When, when you're at, when you're, 
<laughs> act like that. <laughs> when, you're, when you're at people call them trash, you want them to come to your platform to defend that. Yeah. Yeah, I called right. you trash. Come over here and tell me right. that you're not trash. Right. Now you're here. You're, they dropped a teaser yeah. to the goddamn front. Yeah. Now, now it's yeah. all good. They right. dropped a 20 second teaser. Right. Come back on Monday. We got the whole thing. Oh, they so built it up. They definitely sold course. the trailer for the movie. It's going to be like two, three million views. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Flex is going to be just, you know what I mean? Walking through the Hot 97 building. We're looking at the other niggas. Yeah. We ain't getting no That's views. What he, that's what he does. And Flex is. That's on what him. he does. Right, Slow right, to Flex, right. man. All right, we got one more. And we already know what this is. Royce, uh, grade the bars. Let's take a look. Oh, oh, Let no, it bang like Post Malone Might as well get ready for your tomb You play me Tell your wife she gonna be so low soon Like Sway Lee Quarter pills Recouping the deal Worth a quarter meal All I'm trying to do is stay black And get out like Jordan Peel. Everybody do it for the accolades I'm tired of them I ain't cared about Grammy Since J boycotted them Spent my first advance at Manny's Following Pharrell and them Used to Alright guys A plus around the table mm. A plus I give I give Royce an A plus. Starts thinking. I don't know what he's thinking about oh, no, right I'm, now. I, I know what I'm gonna say. I'm just I'm letting you speak. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Reno. Nah, I give I give Royce an A plus. He killed that shit. I can't dispute it. And you expect nothing less. That's what Royce. I expect from Royce. Yeah. <laughs> I gave him A plus, and this is for the content. Like it's just amazing. You get me? Um. But by the way, the the entire thing is just a fucking. I think I paused this like four times while I listened to it. It's it's pretty long. Yeah, it's, it's a long freestyle. It's, yeah, it's, it's definitely. And, and and he was just going at it clearly. It shows the level, and that's why when we talk about Yachty, and I feel like we just say Yachty up almost having his freestyle go before We're this. We're not even comparing the two. It's yeah, not even not fair. Just much yeah. love to Yachty. Let's separate these two. Exactly. <clears throat> People like Royce or Black Thought, when they go on that platform, it's like you see the reason why they've existed in this game, and they'll always have a fan base, and there'll always be an appeal for people who could really rhyme. Absolutely. So um, salute to uh, Royce. Of course, if you guys haven't checked out uh, his project he has out with Premiere, that's just fucking Rock fire. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he did what he's supposed to do. Okay, okay. Um, I think that what Royce the Five Nine and DJ Premier is doing is so important to the art form or culture that it can't be graded. I, I, I wouldn't want to give him a grade, and that's not to take away from anything that he's doing. It's um, it's brilliant. It's important, uh, it's credible, certified, qualified, and bona fide. Mm. Um, the first project that he and Premier did, Prime, I don't know what the numbers were, but I'm, I'm kind of saddened that it wasn't accepted well and received better by today's generation. Uh, they're back for a second effort, and I think that it, it's, it's, it's great, it's commendable. Um, but the, it also reminds me of the importance that uh, Guru uh, put down once upon a time with mm. the Jasmine Taz yes, series. Yes, yes. Very, very vital. Guru and I were very, very cool, and um, I, I did what I could for Jasmine Taz. Uh, and also at the same time, Jasmine Taz found its, its own way, and it, 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 it's a piece of hip hop fucking history. I hope that this is received. Uh, Prime 2, uh, they mention you guys, Everyday Struggle, uh, in this new project. Um, but do you think that the audience of today will accept it. I think that there's a, uh, um, a place for, you know, for this. I think that they will accept it. I mean, I don't expect the casual pump or Yachty or right, those right, type right, of right. fans, but I think that there is room for, I mean, LeBron, you know, LeBron was like, yo, don't, don't go up there no more. Like, you just killed it. Like, and you know, you got a lot of kids that pay attention to LeBron. Also, to your point about Guru, Kids, please, if you're gonna rap, please research Guru. Yeah. His voice was like a gang instrument. Gangstar for those. Gangstar, yes. Like his voice was like an instrument. He used it very well. I grew up on Guru yeah. stuff. Um, I think that there's gonna be a nice, you know, a nice response from this one. You know, because you got the balance. You got the kids that they might not be into Yachty freestyling, but they could appreciate it. And then you got Royce coming and doing his thing and smoking it. And Yachty might even look at that. And we talked about him wanting to rap more. It might say, damn, I might need to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Study this a little something and step my shit up a bit. And if so I, I, I think it's dope. If I can also just say that, you know, DJ Premier is um, um, still in his prime, still a major factor. But let me ask you, do you think that, if you're up to speed, do you think that the digital game on this is strong enough? I looked and I'm, I, I thought that it could be better and more aggressive. Yeah. Well, are you talking about in terms of streaming and everything? The, this project, Prime 2, Prime, right. with Royce Five Nine and DJ Premier, are you up to speed or no? no, no what, what do you mean, like the digital game? Like pro, uh, promotion for yeah, the promotion. project? Oh, yeah. or, okay. Well, I mean, 
I, I think it's up to speed. I just think that projects like this, they usually fall short, and you'll see it on the charts just because I don't think they're they're big streamers. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it applies to an audience. There's always going to be an audience right. for, 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 for what these two gentlemen do. But it's not the thing that's trendy. And nowadays, right. streaming is all about the trendy game. So if, if it's trendy, if people are talking about it on Twitter a lot, if it's like the cool thing at the moment, it's going to do more numbers. This is more a targeted type of thing. Um, but in terms of the promotion, like if, if you care about it, you would know. Absolutely. And um, with Prime, you just got to take a look. It's like a, a lot of the dudes that's going to listen to Prime don't have Twitter. It's like, Prime 2. <laughs> Prime 2, my fault. Did yeah. you listen to Prime 1? I listen to the first Prime. I like the first Prime because you one? got, um, yeah. that's the first. Hang on. Yeah? Yes. All right. That was one of the first times Premier Rap was on yeah. Prime 1. Right. Royce got Premier to Rap. Right. So, I, like a lot of people, they probably still got iPhone 5s, a lot of people. <laughs> like, you know, you got a lot of the older dudes still catching up. They And a lot of the dudes that listen, they're like, man, we ain't with all this, this streaming shit. I ain't got no Spotify. They probably but, just bought it. But that's why they still they still put out vinyl for collection. Right. You know, they right. still put out the CD, but they have, like, special packaging artwork for people who could appreciate having something in their hand. So I think for the people like Axe for the people that are into Prime 2 and what Premier does and what Royce does is going to be tremendous. But nah, we're not going to see it all over World Star. And, no, you know, no, no. I, I don't think that that's where they want it to be either. Right, right, yeah. But, uh, but, they know what they're doing. Right, right, right. And he has another album on the way, so maybe he'll do even more promo for that. It seems like we're going to be hearing a lot of Royce this year, which don't is good, stop. right? He does not stop. Good variety, like you said. All right, guys, that's our show for today. We'll see you back here tomorrow, same time, 11 a.m. on Complex News. Let's do it.